Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. We just had a bunch of FC25 gameplay information released with this new deep dive, basically essay, that EA has dropped. There's so much information in here and info from the video that we saw from the gameplay deep dive reveal. I want to break it down to the top five things that you need to know, especially as I've already played the game and have some extra insight there as well. So we're going to get into the nitty gritty details today. We were waiting for some of this. Let's get into it. If you're excited for it, drop a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Number one, and the biggest change coming to FC25 has to be FC IQ, the biggest tactics overhaul in 15 years, which is crazy to say, but that's straight from EA themselves. 15 years since a big tactics overhaul like this. We've been asking for something like this, even without really even knowing it. We've wanted customization with squads, with formations, with the ability to tell our players where we want them to go on offense and defense, and that is what this is going to to give us all across the game modes, ultimate team, clubs, career mode, everything, kickoff even. It's nice to finally get some images and to see how this is actually going to look in game because it seems really confusing, right? It's just a lot. You think about you have roles, you have focuses, you have with the ball, without the ball, and all of these roles, like this whole list of like 31 different roles with the focuses. You have 52 different unique combinations of how you can direct a player to play in the game and all the certain formations that you have. There's a lot there. So I'm going to link this down below in the description too. If you want to take a look at this and really deep dive into some of the combinations and into some of the fine print details that we may not discuss today, but we're going to cover all the big things for sure. Let's talk more about FCIQ guys, because it just looks like there's so much going on. But really, when you think about it, there is some similarity to how the old tactic system used to work, right? I think of the Vinny that we saw. And then later in this FCIQ clip here, you can see how Vinny, if I can find it. Yeah, it's right here. Your team is attacking in a 4-3-3, but Vinny Jr. up here at the top is going to make this run inside. You can see he kind of cuts inside, and his roll plus plus was inside forward, and that opened up the space. He didn't even get the pass for the goal, but it opened up the space for the midfielder, Shuameni, to pass the ball outside and then inside to Rodrigo, who was open, and he was set up in that false nine um, tactic himself. So it's really cool to see that in action, and it's really cool to see um, all the different moving parts, especially in the pictures. But you could say there's some similarities to the old tactic system, like Vinny Jr. You could just say, well, that's the cut inside tactic. Yes, that could be similar to that, but it, that, I like it. I like this. I know there are some similarities to the old tactic system for sure, but there were not 52 unique combinations before with the old tactic system with the way that you could choose to move players around. And uh, I think the biggest thing to grasp out of all this is, and what I saw and learned from this yesterday too, was just how it's going to look in game and with all of the like help that it gives you. Like I think EA really wants us to understand this. And honestly, you could learn a lot about football tactics by setting this up by the way that it looks, because it tells you that your team is going to be relentless attacking football, strong build-up play, decent balance of roles, but you're also going to have a big stamina drain, vulnerable to wing play, and light at the defensive roles since you only have a couple of defenders in there and attacking, Carvajal is attacking, and then you don't have a deep lying or a holding center back, center mid, I mean, besides Tremeni, who's the only holding one in that formation. So like, I like how it gives you some of that information about your squad and about your team as you look through the um, different roles that you can play with these players. So I know it doesn't seem like that big of a change, like, because it's just, it's just tactics, right? It's not the actual gameplay. It's just the tactics, but it really is going to impact how our players move on the pitch with all these different roles and combinations. Um, and then of course you have this big thing I want to talk about here. This is being overlooked, but I tweeted about this yesterday because I think this is actually massive. This is going to change in Ultimate Team specifically how we move our players in starting 11s and in other formations and tactics. So like, like right now in FC24, in one of my starting formations, I have a player who's starting at right center forward in a 4-3-2-1, but I changed to a different formation in game and he plays central midfielder. It's Zico, right? In FC25, that wouldn't really work out well because right now there's no penalty for Zico starting in the correct position, but then moving to another position in game. That is not how it's going to work here in these tactics. If you change formation in game and Vinny is not playing in one of his positions that he has in his card, he is not going to be performing those AI runs if he's in a role plus plus as a left wing, but then you move him to like a cam position in game, he's going to assume one of the roles of a center attacking mid, which is not the exact same as a wing player. And he's not going to perform those roles 
as a, a good of a level, right? It's out of position is what would be. He would perform that role even worse than a base version of it because he doesn't have that position. So it's going to be more important than ever to actually have your players in your squad in position when you're playing them in the game, not just in your starting squad they're in position, but actually in game they're in position as well. Now, definitely make sure you go down below in the description and after this video, check out some of the descriptions for all of the roles and everything going on with FCIQ because it is pretty crazy. But again, I just love this is how it's going to look in game. I love that they have this in the video and then also in the pictures because it makes sense and it really kind of puts some images to how FCIQ is going to be played out in game and how some of those players are going to be moving on the pitch. The most interesting thing with this at the start of the game is going to be people trying to find a meta. I think EA's hope is is whatever meta arises from this, there would be a counter to that, right? Because you have all these combinations and all these ways to perform your tactics, set up your squad and play in game. I think they're hoping that you could just do something else. And of course, use your footballing knowledge and some of the insights they give you in the tactics section to be able to decide I'm going to play differently because my opponent is playing in this certain way. Also, here you see here, there's the codes where you can share your squads to a friend. Again, I will warn you about that with the codes if you have different players in your club than somebody else does then the code and the tactic sharing it's going to work but if you have somebody who's got a role plus plus that player is going to perform the movements way better than maybe who you don't have or maybe you have the great player you send your tactics to a friend that friend doesn't have the great player that has the same role plus plus it's probably not going to work as effectively or in the same way so that's going to be an interesting aspect of tactics this year, but everything in FCIQ, it looks good. There's still going to be a meta. There's still going to be a meta. As I mentioned, it's just going to be about, can we find our own ways to kind of counter that with all the customization in tactics in FC 25. The second biggest change about FC 25 gameplay is goalkeepers finally are going to have some variety. Goalkeeper play styles, there's been new ones added. And of course, the confirmation here that play style pluses are going to be a thing for goalkeepers as well. The six goalkeeper play styles are footwork, which is kind of like the old, I'm guessing, saves with feet trait. You have rush out, somebody who's going to rush out of goal faster and more common. Deflector is somebody who's going to have great deflection control for saves. So you have maybe maybe less bounce back goals. I think this is going to be one that people really try to focus on and maybe goalkeepers with the deflector play style will be better in game because you'll probably concede less rebounds. Cross claimer is going to be, especially after this year in FC 24, very important for those corner kicks. For those aerial plus players, you need to have somebody who can claim a cross. Most goalies don't lose crosses anyway, but maybe they will this year if they don't have the cross claimer. Um, and then far reach, that's kind, of the, that's kind of going hand in hand with the cross claimer. Um, but you can see here that it says increased awareness of ball trajectory, further punch reach, and and then cross claimer is somebody who's got improved reach and access to extended reach animations. They added so many animations, man. That's a word. If you controlled F, let's do it. Control F animations. How many times it show up in this article? 31 times the word animations shows up in this article. There are a lot of those things that are added. Could be a good thing. Could be a bad thing. I think this is one of the last ones. Far throw. Who has it? Goalkeeper who is known for starting counterattacks with far throws. So it's just big now that goalkeepers are going to have some like variability. I just feel like this year, as I'm going to look at a squad who is a goalkeeper, a gold that is inside. If you're Matt Turner, who does he have any play styles? He has two. So he's got cross claimer and he's got footwork, which interesting that this is the one for cross claimer, but that's the new deflector symbol in game. Anyway, goalkeepers in this year's game of FC 24, they just, I don't know about you guys, but especially near the end game here, they just kind of feel all the same. Sure, we say players like Casillas and Schmeichel maybe make better saves than other keepers and like this Pickford for me was really, really bad. But it just seemed like the play styles that were such a big part of FC 24 didn't apply at all to goalkeepers. We all wanted goalkeeper Evos. We all wanted goalkeepers with play style pluses. That is going to be a thing in FC 25, and it's going to add some variety. That's what I'm the most excited for. It, it just feels like goalkeepers are going to matter now more than they have before. Instead of just getting one in your team, it's actually going to make a difference if they have some of these play styles. So goalkeepers, play styles, we needed that. We love that, especially with the play style pluses. Now give us some goalkeeper Evos, and we will be there. Big change number three is professional fouls. Now, this is getting a lot of press and a lot of people are talking about it, honestly, for good reason, because this is something that since we have manual control over, since this is realistic and it does happen in real life, in every single game of football, there are 
on purpose and professional fouls for not trying to let a player counterattack or stop an opponent's press forward or push forward in the attack, right? But with our own control, being able to do R, B, and A or R1 and X on our controller, I think it's going to become somehow annoying or overpowered. I think the community is going to take this and somehow make it become toxic, man. I'm just really worried. Like, look, look at this. Like, it's not subtle. It's not like you're just pulling on the jersey and, you know, it's a quick yellow card. Like, this tackle right here, like, that's almost a horse collar tackle, like, in... NFL football, you know, like that tackle from behind or like that one right there. So there's multiple different animations it looks like for this professional foul. But in all of these examples, it should be a clear yellow card. And especially if it's a one on one on a breakaway like this animation right here, that should be a red. If it's one on one and the defender comes up from behind, the only way that EA can stop this from becoming too overpowered and ridiculously uh, overused and meta or some other sort of just broken mechanic in the game is if there's straight reds. Now, I know that it says in here that there's, it's going to um, always result in a yellow card. And it says the excessive use of professional fouls can lead to red cards. But this just, it just seems like it's going to be a problem. And it seems like it's going to be abused. And, you know, sure, it could be useful, but you have 11 players on the pitch, 10 players in the outfield. And if you're going to be moving players around and if it becomes such a meta thing that people are going to be remembering who they have yellow cards with so they can just constantly use professional fouls, get yellow cards, but then not concede goals in positions where they would have before it's going to be a problem. So I have my eyes as do a lot of people in the community on this. At first, I kind of glossed over this and I was like, okay, it's just a realism feature that they're adding in. But after they've shown it more and I see this clip of, of this, like this is going viral right now, this video, like, gosh, that just looks like, especially here on the kind of the back end, like game design footage that just, it looks like it's somehow going to be overpowered. I hope the community does not find ways to abuse this. And when it happens, not really if, when, I hope it gets patched and I hope it gets fixed pretty soon because I can see it being controversial. I hope it doesn't end up being that way, but that's how I can see it. Topic number four of changes to FC25 gameplay brings us to core gameplay mechanics as well with passing, shooting, dribbling, and skill moves. I'm going to look into some of this guy's passing. You know, like this is the stuff that we're really interested in from a gameplay side of things because it is the passing, the dribbling, and the shooting that you're doing more often than not. And sure, tactics can control players, but if there's issues in any of these other areas, um, then there's going to be problems to the gameplay. As you can see here, passing has been revamped in terms of accuracy. Specifically, as you can tell, when these FC25 passes are being made, you have to be facing the right direction as it was showing here in fc24 you could be facing towards your own goal and delivering this driven or through ball pass whatever this is and it gets right to the player that you're aiming for accuracy revamped here he's turning shoot he's passing and it's going out of bounds because he is not in a really lifelike position to make a good pass same thing with that pass there, kind of a first time through ball you know you're gonna have to think twice about making a pass in this game, which to me in one sense does make a lot of sense, but also I think it could make the gameplay feel a little bit slower. If you're having to think twice about, you know, passing and, and playing a ball, you're going to have to be really cognizant of your player's positioning, the player who's going to be receiving the ball. So, you know, also we're used to the end game right now where player cards and stats are like pushed to the high nineties. So we're flying around the pitch with with passes that are going so fast. We're doing pinged passes everywhere through balls that you can just send and they go right to the player because the passing stats are so high. And I'm sure that this is kind of a example here with stats that are a little bit lower. So I'm interested to see how it's changed, but I think that's a nice, decent change. It's not that big of one. Now I want to go to shooting next because shooting as well has been tweaked this year, according to EA. Uh, they said there's no better feeling than putting the ball in the back of the net. Yes, that is very true. The accuracy is the thing that they have changed, uh, which now aligns with the changes that they've made with passing accuracy. So kind of the same thing if you're off balance or if you're facing the wrong direction, but you power up a shot, the likelihood of that going in or even being a great shot is um, a lot less, uh, as you can see here. But they also did add um, new animations for off balance and tough angle shots. So that's interesting. They're adding new animations to help you pull off those, but they're also at the same time saying that if you're in a bad position, 
um, then you won't have as good of accuracy on your shot. So that's a little interesting to me. They didn't talk a lot about shooting, uh, but the off balance follow through and there it is again, animation refresh, adding in new animations based on the volumetric data that they're able to capture and the images and, and pictures from real life football games uh, is coming additional to shooting. Now, this is the biggest thing in terms of core gameplay that I think we're all gonna notice. We're talking, let me blow this up here. We're talking dribbling. FC24 180 turns. You can see here, this player doing the turns. I'll show you back from the beginning again. He's going to turn here, stopping. A little bit of, you know, movement as the player is like stumbling backwards. It's it's okay, but it's not that clean. Take a look and compare that to this FC25 image. The turns are crisp. They are fast. There's not a lot of... of added time or loss of steps in there. This turn, this turn looks kind of crazy. Look how fast he dusted that defender. So dribbling definitely looks more put together and cleaner. I think that was one of the things they mentioned in here was what they went through. They added animations for some of the dribbling, but they also cleared up, what do they say? They uh, cleared up and the clutter in the animations part of the dribbling section of the code of the game. Yeah, new and refreshed animations when receiving the ball for turning different angles. The thing I am worried about with dribbling in FC25 after playing the game is L1 dribbling. I was testing it out while playing kickoff mode and it was very overpowered, kind of like the crab walk. I think, was it FIFA 20 or FIFA 21 where you could almost just crab walk as it looked like a tight dribble move with the player you could move side to side so well and the ball was like stuck between your feet it almost felt like I could crab walk up and down the pitch or wait until the opportunity for a pass or a shot opened up and it was so hard for the defender to take the ball away from me because the movement with that L1 dribbling was so fast. That's one thing I'm worried about at the start of the game. I know there's still, you know, the beta that's going to come out and there's still tweaks and stuff that's going to be done in the gameplay since I played an early version, but that is one thing that I'm a little bit worried about. Now, left stick dribbling is what was showed in this video and that is what was improved with the animation cleanup and stuff like that. So it's positive. I think it's a positive change for all of us. I'm just worried about that L1 at least a little bit. There's also a couple of interesting things in here. First touch play style. They've added new animations for that and then let ball run improvement improvements i don't remember the last time i successfully used a dummy in the game and that is kind of what this is going to at least help it says um and there's some different commands and controls for that so they removed the orbit dribble don't know if i really ever did that but they removed that last thing as a part of core gameplay mechanics skill moves and uh a couple of these skill moves look really usable this is the big feint it is a two star i believe skill move I mean, that one doesn't look too usable. This one does though, kind of like a hesitation stop and go. Kind of reminds me of like a um, heel, heel flick in a way. This one looks crazy. Hold on, hold on a second. This step over ball, it looks like a skill move that is gonna be used a lot. And I remember doing this while playing FC25 for the first time. I did it with Jude, because I think it might be a three or four star skill move. I have to double check. But this one looks like it's gonna be an awesome, awesome way to change direction let's say you're like on you're on the edge of the box wanting to either go into the box to dribble or line up for a finesse shot or a cross this just looks like it's going to be insane look how fast that was and it is a variation of the step over so you know step over speed boost i think that's why it's so fast on that turn that one looks crazy to me that one looks really, really crazy. And then the last one here is the toe drag step over, which is kind of just a fun five-star skill move flare skill. Um, really nothing else there except for just a bit of a flare piece, in my opinion. Yeah, the step over ball is a four-star skill move, um, and it is cancelable as well. So you, you maybe love to see that, you maybe don't. So that's kind of interesting there for the skill moves. I think that one's going to be the most usable, and the stop and go will also be pretty decent. But uh, yeah, not a crazy addition for skill moves this year. Mostly in the gameplay, it's more so around the positioning of your player when you make the passes or the shooting for those movements. Fifth and final thing also is relating to gameplay. We're talking about AI defending, guys, because AI defending was probably one of the biggest biggest complaints in relation to FC24 and how the box was always cluttered, how passing the ball across the box, your defenders would never mark players and how you could never have the middle of a pitch until maybe the late game now to actually build up the play. They said the defending has been changed this year with some defensive actions. Um, I want to go down to the part. Obviously, we looked at the uh, professional foul already, but the other defending update, this is what was a little interesting in my opinion. There's a reaction time modifier, which allows you to compensate for 
for the speed in which the next player switch changes, allowing you to cal calibrate to your needs. So maybe a little bit better player switching is what that sounds like. Shoulder challenges, again, animation cleanup, animation here again for slide tackles, animation refreshes, right? They're adding in more animations. Defensive positioning, this is the good part. Defensive awareness when beat. Improved defensive AI to recognize instances where they are about to be beaten by an attacker, dropping more centrally towards the goal, right? Think about it. You're on the wing, Vinny Jr. is attacking you, and you get beat. Uh, your, def your defender will not try to cut him off straight over. He will back up a little bit, which will allow you to then still be in between the, the attacker and the goal. That's cool. I'm interested to see how that works out in game. Defensive formations, right? It's kind of the FCIQ mention. And then player marking inside the box. This is the golden ticket. Increased defensive AI ability to zone mark inside the defensive 18-yard box aimed at countering cutback goals. Defenders will not follow the ball carrier as precisely, but rather try to defend the cutback pass with increased effort and efficacy. I like that. That's good. That is a direct feedback from this last year of FC24 implemented in 25. Of course, we'll see how it actually plays out and we'll see if cutbacks are still as big of a thing this year as they were last year, but I'm guessing with that, they will not meet. The only thing that I would like to mention in terms of defensive positioning and core mechanics of defending and maybe involving F uh, FCIQ as well is they mentioned it in here, increased defensive AI ability to zone mark. Uh, I never really cared about having the option to either zone mark or man mark in a football simulator video game until I played UFL and you have the opportunity to man mark as well. And I think that would be a really interesting addition and a really needed addition to the tactic setting. Maybe that's added next year. Maybe they don't know how to code it. Maybe nobody's really asked for it until uh, UFL put that out. But that's something where if UFL can do that, I would love it to be added in here. I'm just going up to double check on the roles. I'm pretty sure there's nothing here in tactics or roles that says man mark, unless I missed it. I mean, you have, as we mentioned before, an FCIQ, uh, you still have a defensive approach, a buildup style, and a formation. That's kind of like the similarities to the old tactics. So you have a defensive approach with the basically your back line height. So they show here 70 depth, which you can manually adjust or put on a medi high, medium, or low. Um, I was looking for the roles. Here we go. Defenders. Defender, balanced, balanced attack. Yeah. So the roles, they just are different ways to play the position, but it doesn't say anything unless in the individual role it says the player is going to mark differently i think it's all zonal marking so that's a small thing but hey that might be a little bit of a help for the gameplay and for our defending in this game so i'm definitely interested to see if they add anything to that and uh yeah let me know guys the top five things here i feel like we covered basically everything uh you see that right here one more clip for the goalkeepers right this is a big thing no play style he saves it it goes right to the uh, attacker on coming deflector play style plus that shot is saved and it is nowhere close for a rebound. It is all the way going out towards the corner. So you can see he pushes that ball really, really far away. So I'm really excited for that and for the variety that's going to bring the goalkeepers in this game. But those are the top five things you need to know from the gameplay deep dive. Again, links down below in the description if you want to check that out there to read in more detail some of the other things they added because there was a lot. But that's all for me today. If you did enjoy, drop a thumbs up, comment down below if you have any questions, and subscribe if you're new. It's been Nate the I will see you guys later. Peace out.